Good morning, friend. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are heading out to the garden this morning, not because we're gonna spend any time really in the garden, but because we need to harvest a couple things for what we're doing today. We are gonna spend the whole day in the kitchen. We are making, I think, nine or 10 recipes. We're gonna be doing a big bulk freezer cooking day. I haven't done that since the baby was born, so it's been over six months. So it's time to get some freezer meals in the freezer. I should say, I guess we've done some marinated meat freezer meals, but we haven't done any big meal cooking really since the baby was born. So I'm excited we're out here, but what we need this morning are some fresh herbs. I did a good amount of harvesting yesterday, so I don't need to get too many things out here today, but I did want to make sure I got fresh parsley for one of the recipes. I didn't harvest any of this yesterday and I need about a half a cup I think I'm gonna grab a couple peppers too. now I need to get my herbs washed up. I did a little bit of grocery shopping in my downstairs food storage room yesterday. I did have to run to the grocery store and pick up four items in order to make this big cooking day happen. I had almost everything I needed when I was planning my menu on what I wanted to do on this day. I kind of thought, what do I already have in my house that I can use to make these meals so that I wasn't going out and spending a ton of money at the grocery store and I was utilizing things that I have on hand and things that are in season. My goal for this menu is to plan it so that when big harvest season comes, I can just pull these out of the freezer, I can throw them on the grill, I can throw it in the oven, I can get a big salad or saute up or grill up some vegetables from the garden and it's gonna make my life really easy coming this summer. So let me tell you the recipes that I have planned here. We are gonna be making, this is the one I'm the most excited about. One of my friends was telling me she made this. We're gonna make orange meatballs. We're gonna make chimichurri hamburger patties. That's what we need a lot of those fresh herbs for. Parmesan chicken, breakfast burritos. We are gonna make pizza pockets, green curry, orange meatballs, I think I said that, meatloaf. And I've got a couple other things that are maybes and we will see if we get to them. And we're gonna be making up a bunch of taco meat so that we can have tacos really easily. I'm also gonna be cooking up a bunch of bacon so that we can have BLTs throughout the growing season when the tomatoes start coming in on homemade bread and some honey mustard with lettuce and maybe a little avocado. So good, so I wanna make sure that I have pre-cooked bacon in my freezer. We're gonna make some pre-cooked sausage, whatever we have left over for making the breakfast burritos as well because I just like having pre-made or pre-cooked sausage and bacon in my freezer so that anytime I need to use it, I don't have to go through the effort of cooking it. The first thing I'm gonna do is get some of these rolls rising. These are frozen. I should have pulled them out a little earlier this morning, but I forgot about them till just now, so it will be okay that I'm just getting to them. I'm gonna go ahead and thaw all the ones that I have. These are my test rolls and they need to be used up. I developed a frozen roll recipe, but I had to test a bunch of them in order to get the perfect recipe. So these are some of my test ones that are good and they're not the perfect for rolls, but they're perfect for pizza pockets. So we're just gonna turn these into pizza pockets because I need to use them up. To get these rolls to thaw and rise a little bit quicker, I'm gonna put them in the oven with the oven light on, and that will heat the oven up just enough to prove these a little bit quicker. So first thing done, I think what we should do next is get the oven preheated to cook some bacon. The only thing I did to prepare for today's big cooking day is 
I unloaded my dishwasher and I still need to empty my garbage can. I like to start my big cooking days with an unloaded dishwasher and an empty garbage can so that I can put garbage directly into the garbage can as I go. And I'm actually gonna leave my garbage can out from under my sink so I don't have to open this cupboard every time I need to throw something away. I will also get out a big compost bowl so as we prep veggies, we can just throw all the food scraps in the compost bowl and either give it to the chickens or put it in the compost. One of the only things I really did yesterday to prepare today was to get the meat out of the freezer and have it thaw. And I hope it is thawed. Yes, it is. Sometimes when I do these big cooking days, I do do a little bit of prep, like maybe shred the cheese, cook the meat, things like that, and I did no nothing today. So we're just starting basically from ground zero, except the meat's thawed, because it would be kind of hard to do a day like today if the meat was still frozen. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just start cooking some meat, because that can be doing, that can be cooking while we are doing other things. So here I have some bacon that I just purchased from a local farmer, and I wanna get this cooked up in the oven. I'm gonna cook it on these cookie sheets. I preheated the oven to 350 degrees and it's almost preheated. The breed of pig is a Cooney Cooney that this came from. And so these are very lardy pigs. So I've never had this type of bacon before, so it should be good. So we're gonna get it laid out on this cookie sheet. I like cooking bacon in the oven because it doesn't then splatter the kitchen and I'm gonna get something cooking on the stove while the bacon cooks in the oven. So I pulled out, it looks like two, four, five pounds-ish of bacon. And I can use this bacon throughout the summer to make quick pastas. I can just pull the bacon out and grab veggies from the garden, saute it up, with maybe a little bit of bacon grease, boil some pasta, chop up some fresh veggies and some fresh herbs, and we have a beautiful, delicious dinner. It smells really good. I did not realize I opened one of the packages that was the bacon ends, and so all of these pieces are a little bit funny shape. So I might, there was a third recipe I was, not a third, there was a 10th recipe I was thinking I might or might not do today. And I'm probably going to do it with this bacon. I'm not gonna cook this bacon in the oven with the rest of the bacon because it's completely different thicknesses and it's not gonna cook at the same time as the rest of this stuff. So we'll see what I end up doing with that. But we're just gonna get in here and see how much time I have and get as much done as we can. This is some of the best smelling bacon I have ever had. Just from the smell of it, I think it's gonna taste really good. I'm gonna cube these bacon ends up and we're gonna get these cooking on the stove. I don't want the stove to be idle, so we're gonna get this cooking while the bacon's in the oven. And then in this cast iron, I'm gonna get a bunch of breakfast sausage cooking. This is from the same hog that I purchased a couple months ago. A couple weeks ago, not months ago, oh, a couple weeks ago. A couple other things I should say that I did yesterday is I got out my dishes that I'm gonna freeze my meals in. I like using these glass dishes instead of the foil pans just because I don't like 
all the waste. So I got those out and I made sure they were clean. And then I did do, this is my grocery shopping basket that I did downstairs for today's project. So while we've got the sausage bacon cooking, I wanna get going on making some breadcrumbs because we're making meatloaf and meatballs. We need, oh, and we need it for the chimichurri burgers. I have all of this bread from bread testing and making a bunch of sandwich bread and I had more than we could eat so I just dried a bunch out and I'm going to turn this into breadcrumbs. This is a great way to use up old dried up bread. Probably going to take a couple runs through the food processor. I just checked on the bacon and that still has a couple more minutes. So since I have the food processor out, I'm gonna get the Parmesan cheese shredded that we need for today's recipes and the Swiss cheese. We don't really need a ton of cheese today, but because the food processor is already out and dirty, we're going to take advantage of that. I could smell the bacon and I knew that it needed to come out of the oven and I did not want to burn the bacon. So I got that out of the oven. It is now cooling on the paper towels. I don't want to waste the bacon grease that's on these cookie sheets. And I already had the oven preheated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some frozen hash browns and this is gonna be for the breakfast burritos. And we can use these dirty baking sheets to cook our hash browns that already have the bacon grease on it, so we're getting two uses out of this one pan. And then I am gonna season these up, so I have two bags here. And I think I can get them all on just one cookie sheet. I'm gonna mix these in the grease so that they get nicely coated, and then I'll stick these back in the oven to get nice and toasty. I think I forgot to mention that I am making breakfast burritos as well while well, we are making breakfast burritos. Those were one of Josh's absolute favorite things that I made right before I had the baby. He loves them. He said he could eat them every day of the week. We haven't had them in months. So I thought since we have this beautiful, beautiful sausage and bacon and I have eggs coming out my ears, I actually have some eggs soaking in the sink right now that I'm gonna get washed up so we can make the eggs for the breakfast burritos. I thought this would be a great time while I'm in the kitchen. I have basically most of the day today that I can dedicate to be in the kitchen. I wanna get some breakfast burritos for Josh and I in the freezer. So here I am now processing all this cheese. I started this before I put the potatoes in the oven, but I had to take the bacon out and I didn't want the oven sitting idle. I wanted something in the oven cooking while I was doing something else. Now I have all block cheese here. I This is some Parmesan cheese that is absolutely delicious. It's real Parmesan cheese from Italy. I buy it at Costco. You can get it for the best price there. And instead of putting it through the shredder, I just grind it up in the food processor. And then here is the Swiss cheese for one of the recipes. And then we need to shred up some cheddar cheese. Now you can buy pre-shredded cheese when you're doing these big cooking days to save yourself some time. I typically don't ever have pre-shredded cheese in my house and I'm trying to use up the items I already have in my house. So I am gonna go ahead and shred it up myself. Now I took those little bacon bits out of this cast iron and I want this cast iron 
working for me while I'm doing other stuff. So this is some Italian sausage that I'm gonna get cooked up here so that I've got both of these cast irons going on the stove while I then go do something else. So here are our bacon bits. And then while that's cooking, we are gonna get going on processing. I think I end up processing like six or seven onions. And since I have the food processor out, it's already dirty. I am gonna use the food processor to chop up these onions. Normally I would just chop up onions with a knife, but I might as well use the food processor because I already have it out. That is one of the things I love about these big cooking days is I already have the cutting board dirty. I already have the food processor dirty. I might as well go ahead and get as much done as possible. Now these are some of the very, very last onions that I purchased from that local farmer last September. I bought 140-ish pounds. I don't remember the exact poundage I bought, but these are the last of them and you can see they're starting to sprout, but they're still totally good and totally edible. My onions are starting in the garden to bounce back. They had a little bit of a rough start, but they are starting to look pretty good out there. So I think I'm going to get a harvest this year, but I don't think I'm going to get quite enough to last Josh and I for an entire year. This has been a very good experiment. This was the first time I purchased such a bulk order of onions from my local farmer. He is the farmer that I have been buying bulk from for many, many years, and I do plan to place another order with him at the end of the growing season. Many of you were worried that I wasn't going to be able to go through that many onions in one year, and this has been a great experiment. I think it actually takes about 200 pounds of onions for Josh and I for an entire year. Now our family is larger this year. We do have an additional member, but he is not eating too many onions yet. So my goal, I think, going into the spring is going to be to try to have 200 pounds of onions in the freezer or not freezer, in the basement, <laughs> cold storage. I, I will probably chop some up and have some diced ones in the freezer as well, but mostly fresh onions ready to be chopped and used however I would like to use them. So let me show you kind of where we are now. I kind of just did a reset. I got the dishwasher loaded with any of the dishes. I washed a couple bowls. I washed up a ton of eggs. All of the breakfast sausage and bacon is cooked along with our Italian sausage. So we've got the bacon bits, the bacon slices, Italian sausage, breakfast sausage. Our two pans are here and we are gonna get going on cooking some eggs in this one in just a second. But we also got our Swiss cheese, our Parmesan cheese, our onions, and then I did process up some garlic scapes we'll use along with our breadcrumbs. Cutting board is still out. This can go in the dishwasher because we need to chop these, but I'm gonna do that in a minute. I wanna get going on cooking the eggs next. I almost forgot though, before I cook the eggs, I do want to get some peppers cooked up because I want to put peppers in the breakfast Fritos. These are peppers that I preserved up in the summer so that we can have organic local peppers anytime because we're not going to be having any peppers from the garden for a while. So these are frozen, so I'm just going to stick this in here and get those sauteing. And while those are sauteing, we'll crack up a bunch of eggs for the breakfast burritos. Maybe 12 eggs. The peppers that I'm cooking up in the cast iron are peppers that I purchased from the same farmer I bought my onions from. And that was the farm I was a member of their CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, before oops, it happens, <laughs> before I had my own garden. And so I've just built a relationship with them and I can stock up my pantry and my freezer with local homegrown organic goodies that can supplement what my garden does not produce. We're gonna need a bunch of eggs for making the meatballs and the meatloaf and all of that. So I figured I might as well take that time to get all these eggs washed that I have been collecting over the last however long. I'm getting about six to eight eggs a day. So that was quite a few eggs there. To our eggs, we're gonna add some salt. I did take the potatoes out of the oven, so those are ready for us, and some pepper. And I'm gonna whisk this together.
Our peppers have some beautiful color to them. They're nice and sauteed. So I'm gonna just push them to the side. And then I'm gonna add a little, oh, they're popping. I'm gonna turn the stove down a little bit. I'm just gonna add a touch of bacon grease. Because I have abundance of that now. And we'll pour our eggs in here. And we'll just cook our eggs in with the peppers. So our eggs are nice and cooked. So what I can do is I can incorporate the peppers into the egg mixture. I'm also going to take my potatoes and get these nice crunchy potatoes into this mixture as well. And I'll just mix it all in this cast iron. No need to put it all into a bowl to mix it or anything like that. We'll just use what we already have. You don't have to go through the effort of browning the potatoes, but I do think it leads to a better texture in the end. I'm gonna turn the stove off. I'm also gonna add some of our pre-cooked breakfast sausage just until it looks good. That looks like a good amount of breakfast sausage. So the rest of this I will put in the freezer and I will have pre-cooked breakfast sausage for later when I need to use it. I wanna let that egg and sausage mixture cool down before we make the breakfast burritos because I wanna be able to put them directly into the freezer and right now it's just too hot. So what we're gonna do is get going on the orange meatballs and I have this, ah, this huge bowl of ground beef. This is ground beef that I purchased from a local farmer and we are going to use this to make the orange meatballs. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this bowl right now because this bowl had just egg, salt, and pepper in it. And we're gonna add egg to our orange meatballs anyway. So I might as well go ahead and use this bowl right away. So I'm gonna double this recipe. I just decided to read over the recipe one more time and I decided I am not going to double the recipe because the recipe calls for three pounds of beef and I don't need to make six pounds worth of these meatballs. So I think I'm just gonna do a single recipe. This is one of Josh and I's favorite kind of meals where we can, I can cook up the meat, I can cook up some rice for a side, and then that one's a little frozen. Ooh, some of these are a little frozen. And then I can just go out to the garden and see what is fresh out of the garden and we can have that veggie for dinner. So I'm gonna get three pounds of meat in here. To our meatball mixture, we're gonna add a half a cup of breadcrumbs. And I did four pounds instead of three pounds, so I just added a few more breadcrumbs. Half a cup of milk. I'm gonna add just a splash more. Ginger. Black pepper. Salt. Soy sauce. Scallions. And two eggs. The best way to get in here is with really clean hands and just mix it up. You could wear gloves if you'd like, but I'm just gonna get in here with my really, really clean hands and mix up this meatball mixture. One bummer though, when you get in there with your hands, if you forget something, it does take some time to get them washed, but that's okay. It's worth it because we forgot to put, or I forgot to put some garlic in there. So we just put a bunch of garlic powder in there. Now we get to shape these into meatballs and we are gonna pre-cook these meatballs, which is awesome. Sometimes when I make just like a standard all-purpose meatball, I don't always cook them. Sometimes I throw them in the freezer raw and then I cook them when I pull them out. But these ones are pre-cooked. I did also pull out this morning a ginger shot. This is just ginger juice and lemon. And I thought I would have one of these to get me through the day because it's a long day in the kitchen. I love that. 
spicy, crisp, mm, delicious. So let's get these meatballs made up. It smells so good. I like to use a cookie scoop because it makes making meatballs so much faster. I'm making pretty small meatballs so that when you go to have this for dinner, you'll probably eat, I don't know, four or five of them or so. I might be able to get three pans out of this. Oh, I can feel that ginger warming me from the inside out. It's so delicious. I do have a video on that if you're interested. I was able to get three pans worth of meatballs out of those four pounds of meat. And I just realized I forgot I was gonna add some freeze-dried shredded zucchini from last year's garden to bulk these up a little bit, but I totally spaced it. So we're obviously not going to, I'm not going to put all of this back into a bowl to remix it after making all the meatballs. So I'll just need to remember to do that for the meat loaf. We're gonna cook those until they're fully cooked. And while those are cooking, we'll get going on making the orange sauce, which means I need some orange marmalade. I'm rereading my recipe and I just realized I forgot to pick up hoisin sauce at the grocery store. Now I need to figure out if I'm gonna to run to the grocery store and pick that up. I think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna go ahead and turn the oven off. Today is a cooking day. I've got the time today to do this and I don't want to not make the sauce. So we do have a small town grocery store, not that far from me, which I'm sure has hoisin sauce. I'm just gonna, it's probably gonna be more expensive than if I had got it in town yesterday, but all is well, that's okay. Okay, I'll be right back. back from the store and I got the goods. So let's go ahead. I put the meatballs back on to cook. Let's go ahead and get the sauce cooking in our pan. This is only gonna take a second to throw together. I'm gonna to put just a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of this pan with some sesame oil. We're gonna saute some garlic in that oil. To our garlic, we're gonna add some ginger. Fresh ginger would be really good, but I don't have any, so we're just gonna use dried. And then I'm gonna add some Korean red pepper flakes. You could add regular red pepper flakes, but I don't want that much heat. And Korean red pepper flakes have a little bit of a sweetness to it. They're not super hot. And now that the baby's starting to explore some foods, I don't want it to be too spicy. He might not eat this, but just in case for Josh and I too, I don't want it too spicy. I've never made marmalade before. So this is a marmalade that a friend made from Tyler Farmer Ranch. They do have a YouTube channel. I met them when we went to Utah and we did the salt tour. She gifted me some homemade marmalade from oranges from her orchard, which is pretty special. I'm gonna turn the stove off because this is getting pretty warm. I do want to this winter try making marmalade myself. I am gonna supplement this homemade with some store-bought marmalade. And then the last thing we're gonna add is our hoisin sauce. Our sauce is cooked and kind of boiled together, so I wanna give it a taste test to make sure it doesn't need anything. Mm, that is so good. We might have this for dinner tonight. This is so good. So let's pour this over our meatballs. The next thing we're gonna do is make the pizza pockets because that dough is ready. While the sauce was cooking, I took the meatballs out of the oven. I drained the grease and the meatballs shrunk enough that I could get them in two dishes. 
So I just condensed the meatballs into two dishes. I'm gonna make this sauce go between the two. So I'm gonna put half in each. We're gonna let this cool completely. I'll pop one in the fridge probably for dinner tonight and the other one will go in the freezer. These pizza pockets are probably gonna be for lunches, which is gonna be great. I'm going to do a very simple filling. I'm gonna do some pepperoni, because that's what I have. I could put Italian sausage in this as well, because I cooked some of that up, but I think I want something a little bit different than what we normally do. We normally have Italian sausage pizza, and so I think I'm gonna do it with some pepperoni, some homegrown, homemade pizza sauce, and then I didn't even need to shred any cheese because I had some pre-shredded cheese here. So this is how I'm gonna put these together. So to make the pizza pockets, I just flatten the dough out, and then I take about a spoonful of pizza sauce. I think I'm gonna add two pieces of pepperoni and a good amount of cheese. And then you just fold it up on top of itself, pinch the seams, and there is your pizza pocket. So these are my one hour dinner rolls. This was from experimenting, making a bunch of different recipes, trying to figure out the best way to freeze the dough to then thaw it and make rolls. And I have so much leftover dough from all this recipe testing. We can only go through so many rolls, Josh and I, I wanted to think of a creative way to use up all the you know test batches and this is a great way to do it because if, if they don't fluff up perfectly that you want a roll to fluff up like it's not a big deal it's a great way to get creative in the kitchen and you could put whatever you want in these i just found some sliced onion in the fridge from the other day and so i thought you know what some sliced onion in this could be really good too so in this Next few that I make, I'm gonna add pepperoni, sliced onion, cheese, and pizza sauce. The world is your oyster, really, when it comes to this. You could use pizza dough to make this as well. Just divide your pizza dough into smaller portions and flatten them out into little circles and fill them with whatever you want. It really doesn't have to be a specific dough of any type. One thing I've learned from all this recipe testing I've done is that bread is really, really forgiving. Sometimes you think of, or I used to think of bread as this super, 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 super technical thing, but it is really, really forgiving and you can get really creative and kind of just have fun with it. So that's what I'm doing here, just trying to be creative and use up what I have and make something really delicious. These heat up really, really easily. You can either thaw them first or you can just go ahead and heat them up from frozen. It doesn't really matter. You can heat them up in a air fryer, a microwave, a toaster oven, the oven, whatever you want. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get an egg wash onto these little pizza pockets. You don't have to do this. This is just giving it a nice color. Now that we're kind of in assembly mode, let's get the breakfast burritos assembled so we can get that cast iron off the stove. I have just sanitized my counter so that it's nice and clean so we can work on it and make our breakfast burritos. I'm gonna grab my cutting board here so we can work on the cutting board. We have kind of a spot to do this. I'm gonna grab out quite a few tortillas. I don't know how many exactly we're gonna make, but we're gonna start with that. I've got our cheese here, and I'm making a little bit of an assembly line. We've got our saran wrap here, or a plastic wrap. And what I'm gonna do is get my delicious filling mixture sitting next to me and we're just going to start by putting some of our yummy breakfast burrito mixture. I think I have too many tortillas out so I think what I'm going to do is just take this many so far. Start with that and then I'll put some cheese on the top. We're 
roll it up. And I'm going to take our burrito that is nice and wrapped and I'm going to put it back in the tortilla bag so we can just reuse this bag. No need to get a new bag out. And then I'll keep doing that until I've used all of the breakfast burrito filling mixture. One of the awesome things about breakfast burritos is you can honestly make them however you want. You could make it vegetarian, you could make it with all meat and no egg, you could make it with whatever kind of cheese you want. You can really make it your own and that is a cool thing. There's no right or wrong way to do it. This is Josh's absolute, absolute favorite freezer breakfast type thing that I make and he doesn't know I'm making these today. So he's gonna be so happy when I tell him that there are breakfast burritos again. The way that we like to cook them the best is actually to thaw them first. You take them out of the freezer, pop them in the refrigerator overnight. They only then take about 45 seconds to a minute to heat up in the microwave. If you have a microwave, you could reheat them in the oven on the stove if you want to get a nice little crust to it you could heat them up in the air fryer however you like to heat things up you can reheat them from frozen if you want but they just cook a whole lot faster if you thaw them out the night before so usually what i do is i will grab maybe three or four of them out of the freezer at a time and then josh can have them for breakfast he said that he could eat these every single day he absolutely loved them. The last time I made them was right before we had the baby. And so postpartum, this is what we had for breakfast a lot. Josh would warm one up for me, he would warm one up for himself, and we had a nice hearty breakfast that didn't take any effort or clean up. That was the best thing that I did for myself for postpartum was get a bunch of meals in the freezer. My family and friends all were really generous and also did a meal train. But after that was over, then I could rely on my previous self's efforts. And one of the best things about it, and I didn't even think about this obviously until I was in it, because that was the first time I'd ever been postpartum, was the gift of less dishes because it's a lot less dishes if all you have to do is heat something up and make some rice or something like that and maybe you know open a bag of salad mix or something. It just was so nice not having a messy kitchen and dishes. Okay, I'm gonna keep going on this. We might be able to use all those tortillas over there. One of these breakfast burritos is plenty for a nice hearty breakfast. It'll keep you full for quite some time. These are the burrito size tortillas here. And then when I get toward the end, whenever I do like breakfast burrito prep or anything where I'm doing like enchiladas or something like that, and I don't have like an exact number of tortillas to filling, then I, when I get toward the end, I'll just lay a few tortillas out and then I just evenly distribute the rest of the filling between the tortillas. So we were able to get 17 breakfast burritos out of what we made here. My cast iron, if you're wondering, that is a 17 inch cast iron. So it's a really large cast iron. It's definitely bigger than your traditional 12. I think the traditional size is like 12 inches. So now that I have all of these wrapped up, I'm gonna throw them in the bag that the tortillas came in. So I'm just reusing the bag, just an extra layer of protection in the freezer. So saran wrap is one, bag is the second one. We got a total of 17 breakfast burritos, which is fantastic. Josh is gonna be thrilled. Because the filling was cooled, 
I can throw these right into the freezer right now. So I'm gonna go throw these in the freezer and then I think, hmm, I'm trying to think. Maybe we'll make the meatloaf next because that'll be easy and that'll feel good to have another win under our belt. I think I better leave some in the refrigerator though actually because Josh will want those for breakfast tomorrow. Okay, the meatloaf is gonna be really easy because we already prepped everything and the meat should be thawed. It was still frozen earlier, but it should be thawed now. I think we're gonna make the chimichurri burgers. I actually forgot about that, that this was one of the recipes we're gonna make. Now I was supposed to purchase, which I guess I could have when I just ran to the store, chicken, ground chicken or ground turkey for this recipe. But in my head, I had already decided to make it with ground beef because I have so much ground beef anyway that I was just gonna substitute it. I could have, that's so funny. I could have ran to the store and bought it, but oh well. This recipe I got from Chef John at foodwishes.com. It's his chimichurri burgers. And we're gonna make the patties today. And this sounds so good on a summer evening. It just sounds so good. So I've got my bowl washed out. Let's make the patty mix. So the first thing we're gonna do is prep our herbs that I harvested. I got them nice and washed and I let them kind of just air dry here while we were doing other things in the kitchen, which is perfect. And I will link this recipe, of course, down below. I've never made this before. I am adding just a few mint sprigs just because I thought that, you know what? That sounds good. So I'm gonna get all of this chopped up really finely. recipe is originally written is you make a chimichurri sauce you add half of your chimichurri sauce to your ground meat mixture you make your you grill your patty and then you top the hamburger with the rest of the chimichurri sauce so I will make up a fresh chimichurri sauce when I make these burgers like when I grill them because now I have so many fresh herbs in the garden that I'll be able to whip that up. So I'm just making the burger patty portion and then I'll make the sauce when I go to make dinner. So now I have in here some cilantro. This is freeze dried cilantro that is incredible. I have some freeze dried oregano leaves here. I'm gonna crush those up into our mixture. I'm gonna season this nicely with some salt. Good amount of garlic, healthy amount of pepper. I've never added breadcrumbs. You know what, I might skip this because the original recipe was ground turkey and this is beef. So I think I'm gonna skip the breadcrumbs and we're gonna add a splash of vinegar. That's it. I'm gonna mix this together as well. The original recipe also called for one other thing. What was it? Let me look it up that I'm not adding. Oh, oil, a quarter cup of oil. And I'm not going to add that because this is ground beef, not ground chicken or turkey, which I think is leaner. So I think I'm going to leave that out and we're just going to get these herbs and garlic, salt and pepper and a splash of vinegar, which I think is really interesting into this burger mixture. There's a piece in here that's still a little bit frozen, so it's gonna take me a second just to get this mixed in. And I wish you could smell this because it smells so good. Oh, I think I'm missing cumin. Shoot. I'm missing cumin and red pepper flakes. So I'm gonna wash my hands really well, really, really well, get the cumin and red pepper flake in here, and then we can shape this into patties. I'm thinking that this mixture could be really good on its own and not have to turn it into a hamburger if you didn't want to. You could just grill this up and slice up some fresh tomatoes and make a nice dipping sauce or like sauce to go on the top. And that would be really, really good too.
I have four patties on the lower part of this cookie sheet. I added a piece of parchment and then I'm gonna get four more patties and I'm gonna keep stacking them on top of each other until I use up all of this meat mixture. I'm just eyeballing what looks like a good size for a burger. I'm gonna get these patties in the oven, in the oven. I'm gonna get these patties in the freezer. Once they're frozen, I will put them in a freezer bag and I will cook these from frozen on the grill just like you would cook store-bought frozen patties on the grill. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna get the meatloaf done because I can whip that together in minutes. And then we're gonna head back to the stove and we're gonna finish the items that need to be done on the stove. I'm gonna put these leftover tortillas away and I pulled out the pizza pockets out of the oven and I was going to freeze these, but they kind of exploded. And so I think I overstuffed them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have these for lunch today and maybe dinner today. And I'm not gonna freeze these. We'll just eat these for the next few days. And this is gonna be kind of like lunch slash dinner prep for the next few days. So those just need to cool. They're gonna taste fabulous. They just are a little bit exploded, which means the cheese just got nice and bubbly and crunchy and crispy and delicious. So I'm gonna get this put away. And now the meatloaf is gonna to come together really quickly because I have out almost all the ingredients we need. I did wash out the bowl so we can use that bowl again. I had the thought I should get my taco meat going on the stove so it can be cooking while we make the meatloaf. So here's some three pounds of ground beef to make into taco meat. For the meatloaf, we're gonna start with some breadcrumbs, some homegrown parsley. This is just dehydrated from last year. I'm gonna add the garlic scapes to this so we use that up. And then I'm gonna put in some of these onions that we pre-prepped in there. And we're gonna add some salt, pepper, with some homemade ketchup, a little bit of mustard, Worcestershire, I have the rest of the egg from the egg wash, and then I'll add one more egg to that. And then that is our meatloaf mixture. I have, before I get my hands in there to mix it up, I have a parchment paper lined baking sheet, and this is what I'm gonna pre-freeze this mixture before I put it in, before I wrap it up. One way I have found to make these big bulk freezer cooking days as efficient as possible is when I'm coming up with recipes that I wanna make on these days is I think of recipes that have a lot of the same ingredients. So today we did meatballs, burgers, and meatloaf, and we have ground beef cooking on the stove. So a lot of these recipes have the same ingredients, but they all taste really different, and so it just makes it for a more efficient day. I have the ground beef on the stove and I wanted to go ahead and just give the kitchen another reset. I put away all of the spices and things that we had made the meatloaf with. I'm gonna pop this in the freezer and then I'll wrap this up once it's done. I wanna get the counters clean. I want to get this area clean here before I get going on the last two uh, recipes on the stove. We're gonna make our Parmesan chicken and our curry. I just needed, I need to get this area tidied up so that I can think a little bit better so that we can just finish strong. I could probably get the curry going so that's cooking away while I tidy up, but I just need, I need this done so that I can think a little bit better and we can finish strong. So we're gonna get these eggs in the fridge. I also packaged up three packages of, well, actually I have two packages of breakfast sausage, some bacon bits, Dry, strip bacon for sandwiches and things, and Italian sausage. I'm gonna freeze this flat so I can kind of break it and I can get multiple meals out of this one frozen bag. So these are gonna go in the freezer now. I have found there are two ways to fill your freezer with homemade meals that you can have any night of the week on nights you don't wanna cook, you don't have the time to cook, and one way to do that is like I did here, I set apart about five hours on this day to get all of these meals done. Or if you don't have five hours to set aside to get this kind of cooking done, when you're cooking, say, meatballs on a Tuesday night, instead of making one recipe, go ahead and double it and put the doubled recipe in the freezer and you can kind of slowly start to fill your freezer 
with homemade meals on the nights you just don't want to cook or don't have the time to cook. All right, we've just given the kitchen a nice refresh. It's not perfect, but it's gonna let me think now so that we can finish the last two things on the stove. The next one we're gonna get going on the stove is the curry, because I want that to simmer for just a little bit. And that's gonna be really easy to put together because we already prepped everything we need. So that's really awesome. So it's gonna be really easy. I'm gonna have a little bit of coffee here. We just have the final little bit to do. For the curry, I'm gonna get my Dutch oven out and I'm gonna get this on. We're gonna put a little bit of oil in the bottom of this Dutch oven. And I'm gonna start caramelizing some onions. Well, that's probably too many. We'll start with what's probably the equivalent of about two. And I'm gonna add some salt to that. Now that we have our curry going and I've got a bunch of the ingredients out we need for the curry, we're gonna turn our attention back to our ground beef. And it's got some nice browning to it. I think what we're gonna do now is we are gonna add a good amount of this onion mixture. Now that we have our stove working for us, it's actively doing stuff while we can do something else, we are gonna get going on our one and only chicken dish this big freezer backed cooking day. You may have noticed, normally I do a bunch of marinated meats when I do these cooking days. I didn't do any today because I still have quite a few in the freezer when I found chicken on sale the other day. It was a fantastic price because chicken has gotten super expensive. I did a bunch of marinated meats to go in the freezer. So I don't need really any of those right now. I need more other tight meals. So that's what we're doing today. So I have some chicken breast here for our Parmesan chicken recipe we're gonna do. This was the first recipe I ever made for Josh when we were dating. And it's probably one of the reasons he fell in love with me because it is that good. What we're gonna do is take our chicken breast and we're gonna cut them into about two, two inches by about an inch or so. And we are not gonna to totally cook these chicken breasts on the stove, but we do need to get them browned on the stove and we're gonna make a really yummy, cheesy sauce to go on top of this. And this just makes a beautiful, delicious freezer meal. And you can serve it over mashed potatoes. The way we like to serve it is over egg noodles. Probably not the most summery dish, but I saw Swiss cheese in the store the other day and there's Swiss cheese in this recipe and it just made me really want this recipe. So I thought, you know what? We're gonna make it. And when I make it, I will probably make a really, really big salad too. I am cutting off any extra fatty bits or anything like that. Our chicken is prepped and our onions are nice and caramelized and they're telling us we need to do the next step here. I'm just trying to scrape up any of the brown bits off the bottom of the pan. I can also see that the taco meat is ready for the next step as well. So I've got some garlic out. We're gonna add garlic to both of these. I'm gonna turn this ground beef down because that's almost done. I double layer my garlic in the freezer just so that it doesn't get too strong. I'm gonna add two pucks to our curry and I'm gonna add three pucks to our taco meat. To our curry, I wanna toast the spices in the oil, so I'm gonna add some ginger. I'm just roughly basing this off a recipe I found online because I didn't have all the ingredients, but I have a lot that is gonna make this taste really good. This is coriander. I'm gonna let the spices toast in this and then we're gonna get our spices in our taco meat. I have not seasoned this taco meat at all. So I'm gonna get some pepper 
There was three pounds of beef in here, so I'm gonna put about three teaspoons of salt. And then I'm gonna use some homemade taco seasoning. My taco seasoning does not have any salt in it because I like to know how much salt I'm adding. I'm probably gonna put about a third of a cup to a half a cup of taco seasoning in here. home canned chicken broth instead of using water I need some chicken broth for the curry I'm just gonna pour half of it in here to help kind of reconstitute that taco seasoning we'll taste this taco meat before we call it good and put it in the freezer I'm really looking forward to this because of all the yummy veggies that are gonna be coming out of the garden in a serious abundance here shortly hopefully and so I want to have taco meat so that I can just grab all the fresh veggies and we can have a really yummy taco night. Josh and I love tacos. We love making steak tacos, ground beef tacos, chicken tacos, any kind of taco. And so this is gonna be really nice. We could even make taco pizza out of this. I do have some pizza crusts in the freezer. If you've never had taco pizza, it's so good. It was a staple growing up in our household. My taco seasoning, I can link the recipe down below. It has a little bit of cinnamon in it and I love the cinnamon. It adds like the sweetness to it and it's just really, really good. But if you don't like cinnamon, leave the cinnamon out. And I know some people are allergic to cinnamon. So clearly if you're allergic, don't put cinnamon in it. Okay, our curry is ready for the next step. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to toast my my curry paste in the oil before with my spices. That's normally what I do, but I forgot. No, oh well, it'll be fine. The cool thing about curry too is any of the fresh vegetables that are coming out of the garden as well, we can add to our curry. So this curry is basically just gonna be a base. I'm not gonna add any potatoes or carrots or anything else to it because I want to know what's coming out of the garden and if we have peas coming out of the garden, potatoes, carrots, green beans, whatever it might be, I want to be able to put that into the curry. I don't wanna put any veggies into it now because I don't know what's gonna be coming out of the garden and I don't want to purchase vegetables at the store to put into this curry and then when I go to make it in August, I have an abundance of vegetables coming out of the garden, I could have used those vegetables instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this green curry paste simmer and kind of toast up in the bottom of this Dutch oven. And our taco meat, I think, is done. So I wanna give that a taste test because if it's done, we're gonna move on to browning our chicken. But first, let me clean up this mess. I wish you could smell how good it smells in here. It's just intoxicating, all the aromas that we've got going on in here, it's delicious. Okay, let's give this taco meat a try. Mm. That's perfect. I haven't made ground taco meat in a long time. That is so good. That's gonna be so good when we go to make it for dinner. So I'm gonna let this cool. So I think what I'm gonna do so it'll cool a little faster because I need this stove top. I'm gonna move this over here because I can't put that into freezer bags until it's completely cool. Our curry is ready for the next step. The curry paste has toasted nicely. And to reheat this, you could reheat this on the stove, you could reheat it in a crock pot, you can reheat it however is the easiest way for you to reheat. I've got a couple cans of coconut milk. Now we're gonna let this simmer on the stove and get nice and infused with all those beautiful flavors. We're back at our chicken and I'm gonna season the chicken really well with salt. And pepper. We're gonna sear these in a stainless steel 
pan that we're actually going to make the sauce in too after we sear the chicken. So we do need to get a little bit of oil on the bottom of this pan and warming up. What makes this casserole so interesting and absolutely divine is you take Parmesan cheese and you sprinkle it on the bottom of your casserole dish. The actual cheese sauce that we're going to make is made with Swiss cheese, but the crust is Parmesan and that's why we call it Parmesan chicken. Now it is time to sear this chicken. Now we are not looking to fully cook the chicken because we are gonna cook this recipe in the oven to completion. But what I'm looking to do here is get a really nice brown color on this chicken because we're developing flavor. Technically you could skip this step, but we're looking to develop flavor. And I don't wanna skip this step because I want to develop flavor. That's what this is all about and one way to have just really yummy dinners is to bulk do it. So instead of doing one of these recipes, I am doubling it and I'm gonna do two because this is a little bit of a tedious process. And once I brown one side, the side that has the seasoning on it, I do go ahead and season the other side. Once both sides of the chicken are browned, we take that chicken piece and we put it on that Parmesan cheese in the bottom of our casserole dish. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our bechamel sauce or our cream cheese sauce. So we are gonna take some butter, quite a bit of butter. <laughs> this is not necessarily a light dish. That's why I was saying this isn't really a summery dish, but it is so good and we haven't had it in probably a year and it just brings back a lot of good memories when we have it. So that's why we're making it today. So I'm gonna take this butter and I'm gonna use the butter to kind of scrape up any of the fawn that is on the bottom of the pan, those brown bits that are stuck that just are so delicious. And then I'm gonna add some flour to it. So this is our roux. We're gonna cook the flour in the butter while continuing to try to scrape up any of those bits. Once the butter and flour are cooked together, we're gonna to add our milk and we're gonna stir this and let this simmer until it is thickened. And then we will add the goodness. This cheese sauce mixture that we're making here right now, this is what is gonna make the sauce to cook the chicken in the oven. And it's also what is gonna be the sauce to put over pasta or noodles or whatever you wanna serve it with. This is our Swiss cheese that we're gonna add once our milk and flour mixture thickens. I've just been trying to tidy up the kitchen as I've been in here. I think what I'm gonna do, let's see, we used all this milk, so I'm gonna recycle this carton. Yep, it looks like our ground beef is cool enough that I can go ahead and package that up. I'm gonna use three freezer bags. I'm not gonna use my reusable silicone bags because I think the taco seasoning it would stain them and I don't want that. So I am gonna mark on here what they are though. Taco meat and what the date is so that when I go to the freezer, I know what I'm looking for. And I need to taste this curry because the curry might be almost done. And everything obviously needs to cool before we can put it in the freezer. So if this curry's done, then I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna let this cool. Taste the curry. It smells good. Oh my goodness, that is so good. Mm. I was thinking I might add some soy sauce to it, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just gonna turn that off. And then when I go to reheat it, I'll put our vegetables in and I'll put whatever kind of meat, probably chicken in it. And then if it needs a little bit of salt or something, I'll put some soy sauce in then. But I don't think it needs it right now. And then when I serve my curry, I usually serve it over rice. And I like to serve it with some fresh lime juice, like, you know, squeezes of lime and also cilantro. I cooked up three pounds of this taco meat, so I'm gonna divide this between three bags. Just like when I make my marinated meats, I am going to freeze this taco meat flat because that will thaw a lot faster if it's flat than if I put it in like a big chunk at the bottom of the bag. So these are cool enough. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw these into the freezer right now 
And when I get back, our sauce should be ready for the next step. Can you see how nice and thick this is? That's perfect. That is exactly the consistency we want. So now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna switch to it. I'm gonna turn the heat off first and I'm gonna add our Swiss cheese, three cups. So about three handfuls. That's probably, well, we'll just go with that. Probably a little bit more than three cups, but a little extra cheese never hurt anyone. So we're gonna stir this in off the heat, or I turn the heat off. It's okay if it's still on the stove here. We're gonna mix this in, and then we're gonna give it a taste test for salt and pepper. Mm. I do think it needs, don't ever be afraid to taste your food and adjust it to your liking. You all taught me this trick. You can use the same spoon, just use your stirring spoon to put it on, your tasting spoon. That's perfect. We didn't really season this at all, so it makes sense that it would need to be seasoned. Now this is a sight of beauty, this ribbon of cheese sauce. So we're gonna put half in one, half in the other, and you want a good amount of sauce. This might look like a lot of sauce, but like I said, this is the sauce that you're gonna put over your noodles. So you want it to have a good amount of sauce. And it's so good. The Swiss cheese really gives it something interesting for a white sauce. Now we take our homemade breadcrumbs and we're gonna to top the top with homemade breadcrumbs. That's gonna give it a nice crunch. So you're gonna get a crunch on the bottom and a nice crunch on the top. So we have our meatloaves here and they are almost completely frozen. So I'm just gonna cut this parchment paper and we're gonna get these meatloaves in a freezer bag here. I'm just gonna wrap. We got 12 pizza pockets, 17 breakfast burritos, two meatloafs, 12 chimichurri, no, yeah, chimichurri burger patties, two of the Parmesan chicken, two of the orange meatballs, and curry. So that is awesome. We got seven recipes done and we doubled at least, if not tripled, each one of them, which was pretty awesome. Now something like this, I call it one meal, but this is a meal that will feed Josh and I for dinner and then it will feed us for a few lunches or maybe a couple extra dinners. That's gonna be plenty. Same with the meatballs, the meatloaf, this one meatloaf will serve us for quite a few meals. So I call it meals, but it's really, one dinner and then a ton of extra meals following that. So when I cook, if you want to see how I incorporate freezer meals into our daily life, go ahead and consider subscribing if you're new because I kind of show how I incorporate them just in my daily life. And you can kind of see what kind of sides I put with them and things like that. And the cool thing is because I use these containers with lids, I don't need to worry about like plastic wrap and foil other than for the breakfast burritos. So that makes it easy. I'm gonna pop these back in the freezer once they're completely frozen. I will put them in a freezer bag. So those will be ready to go for us. And yeah, if you're interested in these recipes, I will link them down below, along with you know the reusable freezer bags and any of the equipment you may have seen me use today. So just I wanna say a huge thank you for being here. I hope this was encouraging. I hope this inspired you. Now this is one way I do it where I set aside a few hours in a day and I just 
get a ton of stuff done. But if you are new around here and you haven't seen how I cook as well, sometimes what I do if I'm gonna cook dinner and say I was gonna make orange meatballs and I don't have the time to set aside, you know, five hours to do all this cooking on one day, then what I might do on a Tuesday or Wednesday or whenever I'm cooking dinner, instead of making one meatloaf the night I plan to make meatloaf that night, I'm gonna make two meatloaves. So I can slowly fill my freezer gently that way, or I can just take a few hours, get my kitchen completely messy, and do it this way. I really like doing it this way when possible because I get to keep using the same bowls over and over and over, the same cutting board, the same knife. Obviously, if I use raw meat, then I need to use a new one for produce or whatever it might be. But just it's a great way, it's an efficient way to fill your freezer with homemade meals on nights that you just don't want to cook. I love cooking, but I don't like the pressure of having to cook every night. And Josh and I try to be very intentional when we eat out. When we eat out, we want it to be an intentionally planned thing, not a, oh no, I don't feel like cooking, or oh no, whatever it might be. Sometimes that still happens, but we try to be intentional about it. And one way I have learned to save on my groceries and save myself for when I don't want to cook is by doing freezer meals. So I'm going to get all this in the freezer. I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time.